We're out here in the outdoor kitchen. It's 1030 at night, and we're gonna show you our recipe for an overnight smoked brisket. Now we haven't shot a recipe in this outdoor kitchen yet. This is the first one. It's 10.30 at night and we're gonna show you this recipe, but our neighbors are throwing a raging party over across the way. So you might hear their gleeful screams of the pool in the background, but while they're enjoying the pool, we're gonna be enjoying the smoke over here. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now this is right at a 14 pound brisket that we picked up at our local grocery store. We've been saving for such a time as this. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into it and we're gonna get it trimmed up and we're gonna throw it on the pellet grill overnight and show you how you can do this for your friends and loved ones too without staying up all night every 45 minutes throwing a split of wood on your offset smoker. Now, before I do any trimming, I always wanna put my safety gloves on. I have cut myself with knives far too many times to be able to not use these. These are no-cut gloves. We'll put a link in the description below. And I always cover those up with a nitrile glove. So we're gonna do that to get started. And this is my knife holding hand over here, and this is my brisket holding hand here. So this is the one that I wanna protect. This one will be holding the knife. Now, the next thing I always do before I get started is always start by honing the knife. Now, this is a honing rod or a honing steel, and it's not actually sharpening the knife. You're just honing it and realigning the molecules on the end of the blade. So I'm just gonna do that, and all I do is I try to get right around an eight to 10 degree angle, and I'm gonna go down and across and back and cross a couple times. And I just do this to make sure that my knife stays sharp. And when I'm trimming a brisket, man, this comes in handy. Now we don't want to trim it so far that we trim all the fat off so there's nothing left to render and keep it moist, but we're looking for a good quarter to an eighth of an inch on the fat side. And we sort of trim any of the stuff on the top side that doesn't look like it's good to eat. Now I want to start by getting rid of any of these gray areas that are right here, as well as this really, really dense piece of fat that you'll find that separates the flat from the point. Now remember, a brisket actually comes in two different muscles. You have the flat, which is actually the piece you see tried traditionally cut in long slender pieces, and you have the point where you find your burn ends and your fattier pieces of the meat. Now in doing that, this fat right here, this is, it's not gonna render. So we wanna go ahead and take that off. It's not gonna last all night, unlike this party over here. We wanna go ahead and take this off. It's not gonna actually render during the cook, so it's useless to us, so we can go ahead and start there. Now you notice we have a lot of fat on the outside here as well as some of this gray. I'm gonna go ahead and take a nice cut along the side. See if we can't get some of this off and see what it looks like underneath. Some serious fat on this brisket. Now I'm not worried about some of this little fat here. This is gonna render out just fine. You'll notice there's a little bit of silver skin right here. I could get really nitpicky and take that off, but I'm not planning on taking this off for today's cook. This is just a good old backyard at home brisket that I'm cooking. I'm not working on a contest today. We're just cooking for friends and we wanna have as much yield out of this as possible. You can see how much fat we've already taken off. I expect as we get to the other side, we'll take off at least that much more. All right, looking at the fat side, you can see how much fat we have on this meat. We're going for right around a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch. And as you can see, we've got a whale of an amount of fat here. So we're gonna go ahead and start trimming it off. We're not gonna go too deep because we don't wanna take out any of that extra meat, but let's go ahead and start trimming up and see how much we've got here. All right, now I can see I'm getting close to the meat here. I can see that I'm actually getting a little bit of meat here, so I know that I've got probably uh, between a half and a quarter inch here to go, so this will give me a baseline of where I can keep trimming now that I've seen this. Bye. 
All right, so <clears throat> we've trimmed the brisket. I've got about this much that I've removed from the brisket and I still have this much brisket. So I would say that I probably removed a quarter to a third of uh, fat and some things that needed to come off. But this is the brisket that we're gonna cook. Now, is it competition trimmed? No. Is this exactly perfect for a backyard? I think so. I'm gonna run with this tonight. So if you have any questions about how to trim brisket, put them in the comments down below and I'd love to be able to weigh in on that. But there are many ways to trim a brisket. This is a quick, late night way to trim it and get it ready for dinner the next day. Now we're gonna go ahead and season this. And seasoning this, I like to keep it super simple. We're gonna go with just salt and just pepper. So before we do that though, I wanna fire up the Memphis Pro pellet grill. That's what we're gonna cook on tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and fire that up and I'm gonna set it to 200 degrees. And we're gonna let it go 200 degrees all night long. Now, we've got the Memphis set to 200 degrees, and someone might ask, why 200 degrees? I've seen others who have done it lower. Well, you absolutely can do it lower, but my whole goal here is I wanna be able to get this as close to done as I can by a little after lunch, because I'd like to have this rest in a cooler, or in our case, we're gonna use our warming drawer for probably between two and four hours. I want that to continue to break down and get juicy and nice and jiggly. And that's gonna happen not just in the cooking process, it's also gonna happen in the rest. So I'm gonna go 200 overnight. We're starting here probably about 10.30 is when we're gonna have it on the grill. And uh, all we have to do is season it, let it sit for a minute, let the grill get up to temp, and we're gonna fire away. All right, salt and pepper, super simple. It's a big cut of meat. It can take a whole lot of this stuff. Now, not too much salt. I like a little bit more pepper. The missus, family doesn't like as much. We're gonna find a happy balance in between. I always make sure I get the sides. And a healthy dose of pepper. I'm gonna start with the sides and I'm gonna go ahead and get the fat side first because we're gonna go ahead and cook fat side down because the heat is coming from the bottom on this pellet grill and I wanna give that as a thermal barrier for our cook. All right, so remember, this looks like a liberal dose of salt and pepper. That's completely okay. Because remember, you're talking, you're only gonna be eating a slice at a time, and that's gonna be just enough seasoning to give this thing the pop it needs. All that's left to do is put this thing on the Memphis and put it to bed overnight. We're not even gonna worry about internal temperature of this brisket until the morning, because there's nothing that's gonna happen to this brisket that's gonna take it over 200 degrees, because the grill set at 200 degrees. It can't go any higher than that. All right, so overnight, we're not gonna check this, we're not gonna spritz this, we're not gonna open the whole thing. It's just gonna go overnight, no touching, no worrying about it. This grill is gonna hold 200 all night, and in the morning, we're gonna be sitting somewhere between 150 and probably 170, and we're gonna wrap it, and we'll take it into stage two. We'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning. It is the next day. It is right around eight o'clock to 8.30 and we have had the brisket on all night. Now, that brisket has been running at 200 degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and guess that we're somewhere between that 150 and 170 mark, depending on where we actually temp that brisket. So, it's time to go ahead and get it wrapped up in butcher paper, and we're gonna go ahead and take it off the smoker, but first, I wanna see roughly where it is with the temp. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have the camera come on over here and follow me, and we're gonna go ahead and take a picture of the temp. All right, we've been cooking on the Memphis Pro, and we're gonna use our Thermal, Thermal Works Thermapen 1 to tempt this. Let's see how we're doing. She's looking good. Still pretty tight because we're still not even close to our temperature, I'm guessing. Let's see. Yep, there we go, we're about 158, 159. In the flat, in the point, we're about 168 or so. Looking good. Now we're running tests on the thermal work signals. And so if you look here off the side, we've got the thermal work signals that we've been running tests on all night. And so we've had our pit probe in to test the pit temp all evening. And so we're gonna go ahead and have a review on that coming up here on the channel. But let's go ahead and get this brisket over to the cutting board 
and let's get this thing wrapped. All right, so there she is, that thing of beauty. Now, you could go ahead and just let this run as it is. Go ahead and wrap it up, call it a day. But if you've actually been watching any of the trends in barbecue, uh, beef tallow has been really, really popular lately. To go ahead and put a little bit of that in the wrap to keep it super moist. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little beef tallow, put a couple spoons on here, wrap it up, put it back on the pit. Now, there's nothing super special about beef tallow. Beef tallow is just rendered beef fat. But you can make this with your brisket trimmings. You put this in along with your brisket, and you can actually make this trimming uh, turn into tallow. We went ahead and picked some up at our local grocery store, but I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this in here with a wrap. And all this is going to do is make sure that this thing stays moist while we have it wrapped. So I'm not using a ton, just a little bit. That's going to give us a little bit of thermal barrier in the wrap itself. Now I want to keep this the same side up that we had previously. So I went ahead and put the tallow on here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this dude over. And so that way when we wrap it and fold it, this side's going to be down. We can flip it over. We have a nice presentation package there. And when it comes to the wrap, there's nothing super scientific about this, but you want to keep it super tight. So we want to keep it as tight as we can around the brisket. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this out bring this up and over we go and there you have it a nice little tightly packed brisket we're going to put this back on the pit, and I'm going to go ahead and fire the pit up to about 250 from the 200 degrees that we've been running it. The whole goal is I want this to be done sooner so I can rest longer. I can let this run at 200 degrees all day if I wanted to, but I want this to get done a little bit sooner so I can really invest in the rest period. Put the brisket back on. Put that down and we're gonna go ahead and fire up the grill to 250 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and let that run until our internal temperature hits right around 200, 203 degrees. All right, last step before we walk away is I need to go ahead and put a probe into the meat. And so I gotta give a shout out to the guys over at Thermoworks. I flat out love these probe spools because I found that my probes are always getting messed up and they're always tangled in the drawer. These probe spools, are they're, they're cheap. They don't cost that much. But the whole idea is I just pull my probe out. Everything is managed for me. And I don't have to worry about kinks or anything. Huge fan. So if you're looking for some way to manage your cables, I gotta say, I'm loving this thing. All right, we'll plug in the probe port one. It says we're running at 74 degrees. Looks good. Get this through the probe port without burning myself. And the whole goal is let's get it into the flat. About halfway through or so. Close her up. And it's gonna let us know exactly when it's time to pull. So we're waiting for that to hit right around the 200s. And uh, then we'll test it for tenderness using that thermopen, and we're off to the races. It is 1045, and our brisket has reached an internal temperature of 203 degrees. So 203 degrees is the magic number for me. And so it's time for me to go ahead and get that brisket out and get it in the Cambro or the warmer to go ahead and finish resting. Now what I like to do is I like to take it and put it in some plastic wrap. That's going to keep that butcher paper close to the brisket. It's going to push all that moisture against the outside of the brisket. It's going to keep it moist because I'm going to put this in the warming drawer for probably, let's see, it's about 1030 right now, 1045. We're eating at six. So I probably got a good six to seven hours that I'm going to keep this and hold this brisket at about 150 in that cooler and try to keep it so that it actually is going to mimic what happens at those great barbecue houses in Texas. So they let theirs rest 10 to 12 hours. I don't have 10 to 12 hours, but I have six to seven hours. So we're going to go ahead and let it rest that time. Let's go ahead and get it out and show you what it looks like. Now you can see this paper is nice and moist. 
It's got some good juice on it. We're looking at that tallow that is actually giving it some moisture that's gonna stay on the outside. Let me grab my thermopen. So one of the things I wanna do is I wanna open this up and get readings without going through the paper to make sure I'm seeing the right temperatures that I wanna see. And that verification is gonna help me know if I'm ready to hold this brisket. That brisket is looking good. Let's see what happens. 198, 201, 196. Now I could let this go ahead and go a little bit longer on the pit. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the Cambro or in the warmer and go ahead and let it rest because I didn't get, I didn't get a lot of resistance going in. There was a, a smidge of resistance going in, but I'm actually okay with that when we're talking about resting it for the six to seven hours that we're gonna rest this for, I'm okay with that. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take this, get it all wrapped up back nice and tight, and then I'm gonna let this plastic wrap do its job. Now the goal here is to keep this wrap nice and tight so we can actually keep that moisture tied right back to the exterior of the brisket. We have our brisket wrapped in the plastic wrap, and now it's time to go into the warming drawer. Now, if you don't have a warming drawer, totally fine. Just put this in a dry cooler, put some towels on the bottom, stick this dude wrapped just like this on top of the towels. Maybe if we put a few towels on top, the whole idea is we're just gonna let it rest, stay out of the breeze, stay out of the elements, and let this thing soak up any of the moisture that's in this wrap. And we're gonna let that absorb those juices, relax, and when it comes time to cut it, we're gonna have a great dinner. So it's been almost an entire day and now we actually get to see what the payoff was for the overnight brisket. So we're gonna go ahead and undo the plastic wrap that we put on it. And if you look, did that hold the juice and moisture in? Oh man, you bet it did. Look how wet that paper is now. Dude, check that out. And that thing is still a steaming. Let's go ahead and do this dude. See what we're looking like. Ow. You'd think after a seven hour rest it wouldn't be piping hot, but it is piping hot. And this dude didn't put on his heat gloves. I would highly suggest that you put on heat gloves for this. Something where you won't burn yourself. All right, and there he is. Check out that jiggle. Look at that. <clears throat> Which is exactly what we're looking for. I need to go ahead and stick a probe in it. Let me wash these hands real quick. And if we stick a probe in it right now, my probe is reading 90 degrees outside because it is so hot right now. 90 degrees. But if I stick it into the flat, I got about 160. If I stick it into the point, I got about 160 as well. So look at that thing go in. Look at that. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. All right. So... Now we go ahead and cut into it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make burnt ends out of this. I'm gonna take the point, which is this muscle right here. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these two and I'm gonna make some burnt ends out of the point. Then we're gonna go ahead and slice the flat. So I'm just gonna come in here and look for that muscle, that vein of fat, which you can see right here. See the separation right here? That is that vein of fat. So I just wanna kinda of come in here and kinda of cut along that vein. Separate the two pieces really easy. Check out that juice right there. You can tell me it's not, you can't tell me pellet grills can't give you juicy brisket. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little slice on this flat and see how we did.
sweat dripping off my face like I'm at a barbecue competition. All right, here we go. The bend test, the clapper. Ooh, that's hot, ow. And will it actually break? You know it. Let's see how she tastes. Mmm. Mmm. Hey, Miss Camera Person. Try by this. Mmm. <laughs> mm. mm. That's good. <laughs> <clears throat> hey Kevin, come here. Come over, come over here. You like brisket, right? Yes, sir. All right, man. Try to buy the brisket. Here you go, Mr. Robin. It's excellent. Thank you. Thanks. That's my overnight brisket, man. It's excellent. Thank you. Uh huh. <clears throat> I just thought, you know, we can take a pause okay. for the cause, right? Okay. Yeah, we can pause for some brisket. <laughs> <laughs> We got nine people coming over in like five minutes. Okay. So we're doing all right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All right. So on the flat, we got it where we want it. I'm happy with it. <clears throat> we got Samson barking at us in the background. It's all good. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take this point and I'm going to make a little bit thicker slices in this point. <clears throat> if you look at that, that's what we're talking about. And I'm going to take this, these burnt ends right here. I'm going to go ahead and cube these dudes up. And we're gonna make these into some burn ins for our friends who are coming over. So, all I'm gonna do is take these, I'm gonna stick them with some barbecue sauce, throw them in this pan, throw them in the smoker. We're gonna have some awesome burn ins. Anyway, this is what I call a classic overnight pellet grill brisket. Not all that much to it. Some questions you might ask what kind of pellets should we use? I used a competition blend. Sometimes I'll use oak, sometimes I'll use cherry. It just happened to be what I had in my smoker at the time. Um, all the times and temperatures, uh, we went ahead and told you that, but if not, I'll put that in the description below in case there's something I forgot, because we got friends arriving in five minutes, so I gotta hurry this thing up. But I wanna say thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully, you can do this exact same thing. No matter what brand of smoker you're using, just take it, set it overnight. You get it 200 degrees, kick it up to 250 when you wrap it in the morning, when you're done, hold it in a cooler, wrap it in plastic wrap to keep that thing moist. You can do an overnight brisket just like this and let that rest do its work. I'm David from the Barbecue Lab. If you haven't liked this video, make sure you hit that like button. We sure appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we'd love for you to come back and see more recipes that we're doing out here in the outdoor kitchen. I want to say thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. This is just what you wanted to stand out here and watch me turn brisket for an hour? Yeah. While the bugs feast on me. Uh huh. <clears throat> Brisket cook, cicada edition. <sighs> like I said, when you don't tear it, that dispenser works great. Oh. Man, that stuff is so good. What's that? Commemorate our first recipe in the kitchen. Oh, who know? You want to give them a piece? Mm hmm. Tell them to sit. Yeah, shake. Good shake. Are you ready? How's that? Was that good? Do you want more? You like the brisket.